Glory to God. I'm glad somebody in the house today is willing to get happy. I'm glad somebody in the house. Go ahead, put your hands together. You will not throw me off my mark. Right. Amen. If you think for one minute that it is inappropriate to clap your hands and give applause in church, I'm sorry. It, it's not. Right. You know, we, you know, we, we give applause and, and we clap our hands for lots of things. It's a way of us celebrating things. It's a way of us showing our approval. And I don't know about you, but I approve of what God's doing in this house today. How about you? I approve. I approve and I applaud what God is doing in this house today. So by all means, you know, you feel free to give your applause. And uh, I'm just so excited and I'm glad, uh, you know, to, to find people who are willing to stand and declare the goodness and the greatness Amen. of God. Yeah. That's what we need in the world today. There are a whole lot of people. And, and in case I have forgotten, you know, Little Disciples Church, I believe, has, is going. So, if, you know, if there's any kids in the house that didn't realize or didn't have a chance to go, they are invited to go down for our Little Disciples Church. They're down there, uh, and they've got some good stuff planned for them. So please, uh, allow them to go. It's not mandatory, <coughs> but if they want to go, we, we want to invite them to be a part of it. Uh, but I am so glad because there are so many people in today's world who are not ashamed to, to grab a megaphone or, you know, get themselves a sign, you know, go out there into the streets and begin to open their mouths and declare a whole lot of stuff. Some of it good. Some of it yeah, not so good. But, you know, the whole thing about it is they've got something that they believe in. They've got something that they are passionate about, and they are not afraid to open their mouths and declare it for everybody to hear. Can I, can I submit to you today as the children of God? It's about time some more Christians got up the gumption and, and got up the passion they need about being Christians and being in love with God that they're not afraid to open their mouth and say so. Amen. Is that okay? Yeah. And it don't matter whether we're here or whether we're where we are. It doesn't matter. The people of God, we need to open our mouths and declare, God is my God. God is my God. And I'm in love with Him, and He's in love with me. The world needs to hear that message. I want to speak to us for just a few minutes here today. Probably, you know, my rendition of a few minutes is maybe more than yours. Um, I um, Several minutes, let's put it that way. Well, a little while. But I'm going to be sharing, and Steve will put these scriptures up there for you. Feel free to write them down. And I'll be referencing these scriptures, and, and, uh, but I want you to take them home. I want you to read them, meditate on them, chew on them, allow the Holy Spirit to impart them to you, and hopefully some of what the Spirit speaks to us today uh, will be affirmed and will be reinforced through the scriptures that I give you to read this week. And, and I do this, I do this on purpose. I do this not because I don't want to stand up here and read the Word of God. That's not why, you know, but, you know, I'm one of those kind of guys. I know most everybody in the house today that's here knows how to read. You don't need me to stand up here and read to you. What we need to hear is a word from the Lord, and the Spirit will speak to us concerning, you know, his word. So if we take his word home, if I give you these scriptures and, and I encourage you to take them home and to read them, what will happen is rather than you just coming out on Sunday, hearing the pastor read from the word of God, sharing a thought with you, and then you don't think another thing about it until next Sunday when we do it over again, what happens is if you write these scriptures down and you take time through the week to go ahead and open your Bible, whether it's an app on your phone or it's, you know, still the, you know, the, the, the tree kind of Bibles. Right. Yeah. Everybody know what that means, right? That's what I do. You know, you, 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 have, you have a Bible made with trees. Yeah. In other words, it's a book with pages and paper. Yeah. You know, paper comes from trees. Um, and and uh, but you know no matter what what your Bible looks like or how you open your Bible, if we take time throughout the week, you know day in and day out, and we open these scriptures, you know what will happen? All of a sudden, the Spirit will begin to speak to you when you open those scriptures. And say, oh yeah, I remember the pastor said this, and the pastor that you know through the Spirit. It's not about what the pastor says. 
Okay? Please understand what I'm telling you. I'm not saying that I'm so important and I'm all that that you need to remember what I say. You have my permission just to forget what I say. But if you want to hear it, I'll at some point, you know, we'll grab a cup of coffee, sit down. I got lots to say. But what I enjoy is when the Spirit allows me to step aside. And what comes out of my mouth is not what I have to say. What comes out of my mouth and what comes out of my spirit is what God has to say to us. That's what I want to hear on Sunday morning. Sister Arlene, I want to hear what God has to say. And God will always reaffirm and confirm His, His, His Word in our hearts. So when we take these scriptures home, when we open them up and we read them, what will happen is God will begin to refresh our memories. And just like the Bible declares, He will bring to our remembrance... What the Spirit has said to us. So that's why I don't take time to read all of these scriptures on Sunday. I want you to take them home. I want you to read them through the week. And I want you to be reminded every day what the Spirit speaks to us on Sunday. I promise it'll help. It'll, it'll help you. It'll grow you. And it'll plant things in you that will make you a, 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 a more devout follower of Jesus Christ. So we're going to share from Matthew Chapter 6, 7, and 25. Matthew 6, 7, and 25. James chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Jeremiah 5 and 18. Isaiah 5. 1 Timothy chapters 2 and 3. And the thought that God gave to me this week, you know, and then actually kind of had reinforced it during our, our prayer time, our strategic prayer time there on, on uh, Tuesday evening, some things were said, and it never ceases to amaze me, you know, and I know it's God, and I understand that's how he works, but when you see it work, you know, and, and it just, you know, it, it, it fleshes out in front of you, you sometimes you just got to stand in awe and say, only God can do this. Right. Now, only God can do this. Right. So, you know, we're there and, and God had already laid some things on my heart and had kind of put some things in my spirit. And then we come out here on Tuesday evening and, and some people had made some comments, you know, and, and we were talking a little bit about, you know, government. You know, we weren't talking politics. OK, we were we were talking government and, you know, how some things have transpired over the years and, and how things have have have, have migrated and, and changed you know, over the years, and, and we've come, even in the Christian world, and even in the church, we have come to rely on our government to do things for people, somebody better help me now, that the church was meant to do. Now, I'm not saying that's all bad. Okay? I'm not saying that's all bad. And I'm not saying, that, you know, I don't subscribe to the theory because there are some people out there, you know, there are some people out there that would like to talk to you and like to make you believe, you know, that the government had to do that. The government had to step up. The government had to pick up the slack because Christians and the church dropped the ball in some way. Okay? That's what some people think. Well, the government had to create welfare. The government had to create all of these things because the church just wasn't doing its job. The church dropped the ball and, you know, I got news for you. I don't subscribe to that line of thought. I don't believe that's the way it is. I believe what happened is, you know, God put the church here and God instructed the church to help people, you know, to be a place where people could find help for the things that they need. We're supposed to be feeding those who are hungry, giving clothes to those who have nothing, visiting those who are sick and, and doing all of these things. That's what God in his word told us as the people of God. That's what he told us to do. So what would that do? That would create an atmosphere and that would create a situation where you would have people looking to the church. They would look to the church. They would look to the people of God. They would look to God to get the things that they needed to help them. Guess what? The enemy doesn't want that to happen. So why, you know, did those things migrate and become part of our government? It was a strategic move by the enemy. Rather than have people become dependent on the church and dependent on the people of God and looking to the people of God to get the things that they need, he wanted to bring their focus off the church and say, well, we can do that in the government. We don't need people looking to the church for that. So he basically stole it. 
Same way as he stole, you know, that's why there's some people out there, you know, and, and I didn't realize God was going to take me down this lane, but, you know, that's where he's taking me, so I'm going. Is that okay? Yes. You know, and that's why some people are a little uncomfortable when we start telling us to dance in church. Because there are some church people that say, dancing? Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. No, 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 no. I'm a church, I'm a church goer. I'm a believer. I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. I do not dance. David danced. David danced. I got news for you. Where do you think dancing came from? But there again, can, can, I be, can I be frank? Can I be honest with you today? It's just another one of those things that was created by God for us. And the enemy stole it. That's right. And he made it something that it was not meant to be. He's done the same thing with... Just looking to see how many kids were still in the thing. He's done the same thing with sex. Sex was created by God. It's meant to be a beautiful thing. Yeah. Shared between a husband and a wife in the privacy of their own bedroom. But it's supposed to be a beautiful, wonderful thing. We're supposed to enjoy it. There again, one of those things, the enemy stole it and he just, he, he just made it something awful. He just made it something awful. And he's done the same thing with, you know, singing and music. And all of these things that were created by God to be beautiful ways for us to celebrate and to praise and, and, and to, to be in relationship with one another. You know, this is the way it was supposed to work. And the enemy has just kind of got his foot in the door and got his hands on stuff. And he's just stolen all of that stuff away. And he's taken what God meant to be wonderful and good and, and, right. and beautiful. Right. And he's turned it into some ugliness. Right. Uh, right. And I believe this is just another one of those things. You know, with... The helps right. that are supposed to be coming from the church and from the people of God. The helps ministries that are supposed to be out there and that we are supposed to be doing. He's stolen that away and he's put it in the hands of the government. Now, over the period of time, you know, some of, some of uh, the churches, I will say, some of the religious people have gotten to a point where they've got comfortable with that. Well, we don't have to worry about doing that. The government will take care of them. <laughs> We'll just come to our beautiful sanctuary and we'll, we'll oh, somebody got to help me now because I got, I got to do a little preaching here this morning. You understand? We're going to go into our beautiful edifice. We're going to gather together as the people of God and we're going to be all high and mighty and we're going to celebrate Jesus. We don't have to worry about, we don't have to worry about getting out into the streets and touching the homeless people and, and touching the, you know, there's, there's programs for that. <laughs> There's welfare, there's, there's food stamps, there's all of these government things. I don't need to worry about going out there, OJ, and, and soiling myself or getting anywhere close to those people because I got, I, you know, I'm just not real comfortable with that because, tell you the truth, some of them smell bad. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear me? Uh-huh. Some of them do smell bad. You'd smell bad, too, if you didn't have a home to live in and didn't have a shower where you could take one every day. You wouldn't smell too good, either. But we've gotten spoiled and allowed the government to go ahead and just, well, we're not going to worry about it. The government will take care of that. Well, i got news for you. It will not always be that way. Because i got news for you. You don't steal something away that belongs Come to God. On, that sooner or later, God ain't going to show up and God's going to take That's back. Right, oh, right, somebody right. got to help me now. Right. And now I'm feeling like I can preach. Yeah. I got news for you. Sooner or later, God will show up at some point yes. and God will tear down those governments. God will tear down all of that, that evil stuff and he will take back what belongs to him and he's going to put it back in its rightful place. So guess what? We better prepare ourselves. We better batten down the hatches because one of these days when the government begins to fail. Right. Right. And trust me, this is not a political message. Okay? I am not preaching this because of the outcome of our recent election. Please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. This has nothing to do with it. I don't care who gets elected. I don't care what, what political party is in charge. The Bible tells me that there's coming a day and time when the governments of this world will fail. They're going to run out of money. They're going to get bankrupt because they're not doing it God's way. And read some of those scriptures. The Bible tells you in the last days, perilous times are going to come. Because the governments are going to fail. They've been doing what they've been doing for a long time. 
sometimes just getting along by the skin of their teeth. You know, but they've been finding a way. But sooner or later, as time progresses and we get closer and closer to the return of the Lord, yeah. I promise you the governments of this world are going to fail. Right. And there are going to be a whole lot of people out there that are in trouble yeah. and they are looking for help. What's the answer? God's people. Right. Yes. And trust me, the truth of the matter is the darker the world gets, mm. yeah. the brighter our light begins to shine. And people are going to begin to look to the church for the things they need. Why are they going to do that? Well, hopefully why they're going to do that is because we are not living according to the governments of this world. We're not living according to their precepts. We live in a higher realm. You know, am I a citizen of this great country? Yes, I am. And I'm proud. I'm proud to be an American. I'm thankful for the, for the men and women who served. And I apologize. I did not recognize that last week. I will take just a minute. I'm going to go off track for just a minute. Please, please forgive me. But everybody in the house who is serving or has ever served in our military, please stand. We want to recognize you. Would you please stand? Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate what you've done because we can enjoy the liberties that we enjoy in this country. I'm proud to be an American. I'm glad that God chose to make me part of a family that lives in this great country. Not that I have against anything against anybody from any other country. I don't. But trust me, they don't live some of, some of the, with some of the liberties and some of the freedoms that we live with. I'm, I'm proud and I'm glad to be that way. But i got to tell you, I still don't live, you know, according to everything that this government puts out there for me. I don't live according, you know, to the graciousness and what's provided for me through the government of this country. I live in a kingdom realm. Amen. You understand that? I don't live in a I don't live in a world that's governed by people of this world. I live in a kingdom world, you know, that has one ruler and one God and 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 one sovereign being who takes care of me, and that's the way I want to live. And if I continue to live in that, what happens in this world will it affect me? Yes. Sure. But will it change how I live in relationship to God and to others? No, it will not. Hallelujah. And trust me, the darker the world gets, the, the more needy the world gets, the more chaos that you begin to see develop in this world, okay, the more that that happens, you know, the more people are going to look at the people of God and see the stability, you know, see the blessing, see the above. Somebody ought to get happy with me. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking a word over you today. You understand that? You're going to live in abundance. You're going to live in blessing. When the whole world is falling apart, God says, if you follow me, if you live according to the way I'm going to teach you to live, He said, I'm going to bless you. That's for us. So while the world's falling apart and, and, and losing their way, here we are living in abundance and blessing. Trust me, that will become more and more and more evident to the world. As things go haywire out there. Right. You understand? And I'm telling you, it's bound to go haywire. Amen. Why? Because what they do is not rooted and founded in truth. Amen. It's, it's founded in what they can see. Right. You know, and that's what Bonnie and I have talked about this numerous times. You know, we've had some discussions, you know, about some things. It's like we get upset, you know, and when it comes to things that are going on. Whether it be through an election or whether it be through whatever, and, and we get all upset because you know we feel like you know we had we had a clear direction from God. I, I had a vision from God when I cast my vote, you know, on election day. But yet the election didn't seem to go the way we thought. Um, excuse me, God. But you understand what I'm saying? All I can see is what's in front of me. I can't see beyond. There may be some things that God understands and knows that I don't. So just because it didn't go my way doesn't mean it didn't go the right way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And we're like that with everything. 
We think everything we think is that, well, that's the way it ought to be, but we can only see what's in front of us. Right. I heard a story told one time about, you know, some, uh, you know, how they make quilts. Anybody ever seen a, a handmade quilt yeah. it, when it was being made? Yeah. Some of you probably have made them, right? They used to have the, the quilting things and, and, and stuff like that. Of course, by the time they get done with it, you know, they put the, the padding in there and they put the nice... The nice, you know, backing, the nice soft fleece backing thing on it, you know. And when you get it, man, it doesn't matter whether you have it on this side or, you know, the up top side. It just, it's beautiful all the way around. And, and, of course, it's got these nice little borders sewed on the edges. There's no rough edges to it. It's just, but if you ever saw a, a quilt being made, if you ever saw it in its early stages, okay, what you see on top is one thing. But when you get underneath it, you know, when you're looking at it from the bottom up, yeah. you look up there and you see the way that thing is stitched together and you see the way that thing is pulled together and you think, good heavens, do these people have any clue what they're doing in making this quilt? Because right. trust me, from under, it don't, it don't look nothing like it does from the top down. Right. Right. Everybody see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. Trust me, when we look at it, life and all the stuff that's going on we're looking at it from the underside and we're looking up and all we see is and we think god are you sure you know what you're doing i mean i i got some things figured out here god i mean i don't know everything but i do know a few things and if you need a little advice i can help you here because we look at it from the bottom and we think to ourselves what in the world is god doing but you need to understand something God's looking at it from the top down. God knows exactly what he's doing. God doesn't make mistakes and, and God doesn't back up and say, whoop, wait a minute, I, 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 think, I, need to, I think I need to do that different. You know, now, again, I, I promise you this, there are times if you choose to and you want to, you can take the needles out of his hand and try to quilt it yourself. That's right. And I promise you it will not turn out the way God meant it to. That's right. You know, that's exactly where the government is. You know, they, they the enemy has stolen all of this stuff and he's taken stuff that was meant to be, you know, driven by God, put in the, the hands of God's people and, and developed by God, you know, according to truth, according to the way it was supposed to be, and administered, you know, in love, administered, you know, the way God meant. Because you understand, you, you understand what government is, right? Can I give you a short definition? You may want to write this down. <coughs> Government is nothing short of this. It's authority by force. That's the only authority government has. They're going to pass the laws. They're going to tell you what to do. And if you don't like it or you don't comply, they will force you. They'll force you. They don't care whether you agree with it or not, whether you understand it or not. You know, they don't really care how you feel about it. They will simply create the laws. They will create all of the rules, and they will tell you this is the way it's going to be. If you don't like it, tough. And if you buck against it, we'll enforce it. We'll enforce it. That's the way the government works. You see? And there's a difference between the way the government does things and the way God intended us to do things. Right. You see, you understand what the government does, and this is the only way I know how to explain it. Please don't misunderstand. I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking any of the programs that are out there or anybody that you know takes advantage of those programs. They're they're there. They're available right. by all means. Absolutely. You know, if, if you qualify and can take advantage of it, by all means, do that. But the thing that really gets me, and when you begin to understand the way God intended for things to happen, you know, and the way the government does, you know, everything the government does is a handout. And what they've done through all of these handouts and through what all they have done, and they've corrupted this thought process of helping those in need, they've corrupted that process to the point where they have created this, this mentality of entitlement. Because they're just handing it out. With, without any without any thought of qualification or whatever. You know, that's not what God really intended for us to do. At no point did God intend for us, and this is the this is the thing that we'll have to be careful of as we move forward, as God moves on us, you know, and, and this is the way, and I and I'll get to this in just a minute, but that that's the reason God blesses our food pantry like he does. Right. Because our food pantry is not operated as a handout. That's right. 
Do we give food away? Yeah. We do. But you see, to us, there's more to it than just showing up once a month and giving food away. There's some ministry that's taking place. There's a core value there. We're all about helping people and ministering people and doing something for them that reaches far out and above and outweighs the free food that we give away. And that's the difference between giving a handout and giving a hand that's what God intended for us to do. He didn't intend for us to just be a station that just gives <coughs> stuff out and hands stuff out. What God intended for his people and the way we are supposed to be operating is we're supposed to be reaching out and giving somebody a hand up. We're going to meet your needs. We're going to do what you, whatever it is you need. If you need food, we're going to give you something. But at the same time, we're going to help you, you know, in the fact that you may not have to depend on that the rest of your life. You know, we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to find a way to help you and encourage you and, and move into a place where you're not, you're not living with that type of beggar spirit. Yes, amen. And that's what the world has created. Yeah. The world has created a beggar spirit. And it is a spirit straight out of the pits of hell. And that beggar spirit is no matter what you have, you never have enough. And you're always standing like this with your hand out waiting for somebody else to give you a little something. That's what a beggar spirit's all about. That's not what God, you know, God wants us to live with a, with a blessed and abundant spirit. No matter how much or how little you have. Come on, somebody got to get with me on this thing. I don't have to have a bunch to have an abundance. That's right. I might have an abundance and I can have a spirit of generosity. I can have a spirit of blessing when I have nothing. Really? How does that work? Asked the widow who threw in her two mites. God saw that. He recognized it and said, he looked at the rest of them and he said, she gets it. That's what he said to him. She gets it. And I, I'm, I'm telling you today and my word to you today that God wants us to get it to understand. He says, you as my people, he said, you need to get it. There you go. That don't mean that, you know, when you live with abundance and you live in blessing, that doesn't mean that you're going to have more than everybody else. That's not what it means. You know, it doesn't, you know, yeah. although, you know, there is some blessings promised to us out there. You know, that God doesn't want us to be living, you know, with, right. without. God doesn't want us to go without. Matter of fact, God makes a promise to us. He said, you serve me and you continue to serve me. He said, someday you're going to live in houses you didn't build. You're going to reap crops that you didn't sow. He said, I'm going to bless you beyond your wildest imaginations where you couldn't. He said, you're going to be so blessed you ain't going to know what to do. But there's so much more to that. Because the blessings of God is not contained simply in the stuff. Amen. And that's the way, you know, and I believe with all of my heart, that's the reason, you know, our food pantry prospers the yes. way it does. Yes. You know, because people sow into that ministry. Why? Because we're doing it right. Yes. It's about ministry. It's about relationship. It's about not offering a handout, but offering a hand up. And, and helping people where they are at their point of need. And because of that, because we're doing it right, because, you know, we, we try to be good stewards over that, God just opens the windows of heaven and he says, Tr you know, prove me. Prove me. Test me. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven. He says, give and it will be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together and running over. Will other people sow into you? And that's what God does in that ministry. That's why we get a check every year from Center Township. God has moved on them. I believe that. God has moved on the township to sow into this ministry. And they do it. They do it gladly. I'm so glad for that. I'm so glad for that. And I'm not bragging. But yes, I am. I'm bragging on God. Because that's just what God does. When, when you do it right, that's just the way God does. And I brag about God all day. I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm bragging about God. And the whole thing about it is, as we go forward and we move into these last days, and the world becomes dark, and the government begins to fail, and the government will begin to run out of money, people will look at the people of God. 
They will look at the church and they will look at the way we live. Not because we have so much stuff, but they'll look at the way we live. They'll look at the way we talk. You know, they'll look at the way we conduct ourselves. And, and we're not, you know, come on. You know what I'm talking about. There are people today, you know, that I guarantee you there are people out there today. They haven't slept through a full night and gotten any rest in the last two weeks. Because all they're doing is standing there going. Oh. And I've had Christians. I've had Christians tell me that. They're a losing sleep. Over recent events. Can I tell you? We are not supposed to live that way. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. No fear. We're not supposed to be living that way. That's right. We're supposed to be standing in the oh, abundance right. and the blessing of God and saying, right. God is good. Amen. Amen. He is. That's right. God is good. All the time. And the world needs to see us. The world needs to hear us doing that. Because as, as time progresses and those perilous time comes, I promise you the world will begin to look again to the people of God. They will begin again to look at the church. And they will begin again to say, i got to find out what's different. Because they don't seem to be having as many problems in this world as I am. They don't live with fear. They don't live with anxiety. They don't live in want. And they don't live, you know, yeah, it don't look like they have much. But boy, they sure seem like they're happy. I'm going to tell you right now, there is a problem when you go into a house full of people, you know, a house full of Christians, or you go into a church, mm -hmm. and you don't see one person in there looks like they're happy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you been to that church? Yeah. Yeah. I have. Yeah. I've been to that church. Yeah. You walk through the door, and you look around, and you think, good heavens. Yeah. <laughs> First thing you want to say is, who died? You can feel it. You, you can feel it. You can see it. Yeah. And, and that's the whole problem. You know, when you walk in there, you want to look around and say, my goodness, who died? Yeah. But you know what the true problem is, though, right? They don't know who died. Because somebody did die. <laughs> somebody did die. But it wasn't somebody who died that we need to get sad about. You know, we gotta we gotta change our thought process on some stuff. We gotta we gotta stop thinking in that negative terms all the time. You know, tell me the last time, and I've I've been to some of these too, right? Y'all been there? Y'all been to some of those funerals where man, oh man, oh man, it's just a horrible, awful thing. But then I've been to a few funerals. Man, there was singing, yeah. there was dancing and clapping and celebrating yeah, yeah. and just whatever. And people walk into a funeral like that and they think, are these people nuts? <laughs> this is supposed to be a funeral. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, come on. <laughs> God's people don't need funerals. God's people don't need funerals. Why? Because the Bible says God's people don't die. Wow. And we got to start changing our thinking about some of that stuff. We got to let that. I mean, Bonnie and I had that conversation. I mean, yeah, they're they're dealing with you know they're going to go visit you know this this lifelong friend of theirs, and she was such a sweet person. Even my daughter, you know, Abaria commented you know about eighty. I mean, we're not we're not physically you're not physically related to them in any way, shape, or form. There's no blood. There's no blood relation there whatsoever. They've just been lifelong friends. But, you know, AD was just the kind of person that would, you know, send cards. You know, she still sends birthday cards to Bonnie and I, wow. you know, every year. Every year she would send uh, Christmas cards, birthday cards to my children. You, you understand what I'm saying? She was just that kind of person. You know, she just so thoughtful. And, and even Aubrey, she said, I, you know, AD never, never missed my birthday. Wow. You know, and, and who is she? She just... A friend, you know, a daughter of a friend, that you know, of a friend, and yeah, and that's just the way she is. But it impacted her, and it and it made a difference. And you know, Bonnie and them are talking because they're going to go visit her. What probably this week, they're going to they're going to go visit her, and they know, you know, unless for some reason, this, this, you know, in God's sovereignty, He chooses to 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 do things a little differently. What we're expecting is, you know, they're going to go visit her this week. And they, they pretty much are figuring at this point, the way things are, it's going to be the last time they ever see her this side of heaven. They know it's going to be their last visit here on earth with somebody they love. 
And it's okay to weep over that. Absolutely. Even Jesus weeped over that. Yeah. Wept. Weeped. Wept. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus wept over that. But he wept over it. He wept over it for an altogether different reason. What he was weeping for was not because his friend Lazarus had died. You know what Jesus wept over? He wept over the fact that Lazarus' family didn't get it. They didn't get it. Did you have to understand? Yeah, he's gone. He's in that grave. But don't you understand? He knew me. He knew me. I am the life. You don't need to weep because he's gone. You need to weep for yourselves. You know, that's why, and, and, and I believe there are times that God weeps over us in those areas. You know, what he wants us to understand is he wants us to stop weeping when we think about the death of a righteous person. It is not the ultimate defeat. It is not the, it's not the worst thing in the world that can happen to somebody. There are times, you know, when death is indeed a blessing. That's right. That's right. That's right. You understand? To those who know the Lord, death can be a blessing. That's right. It's ultimate victory That's right. over death, Amen. hell, and the grave. Right. We don't suffer those things. We're not subject to those things. Why? Because we know Jesus, and in Jesus there is <coughs> life. Right. Right. Amen. <laughs> right. But see, we, we fall into this mindset, <coughs> and, and we fall prey to it. Sometimes, as human beings, but you know, somewhere along the line, we got to break out of that. We got to stop thinking the way the world thinks, and, and and we're good at it in some ways. We're good at it, you know. I I, I got to tell you, we here in this local church, and 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 really the the global church about a prophecy as a whole, you know, we haven't really we haven't had any racial issues in the Church of God of Prophecy for years. We've been integrated, and, and we've loved one another, and to us, all lives matter. That's right. Amen. All lives matter. Right. I don't care what language you speak. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care. You know, all lives matter, you know, in this church. And I'm not saying that just to be heard to say it and pat myself on the back. It's the truth. All lives matter. So, you know, we haven't struggled with those things, but man, the world is struggling. And one of the reasons the world is struggling is because they, the, the things that they're, they're doing and the laws that they pass and all of the things they do, it's not based on truth. Right. And can I tell you this? And, and, and please, I don't want to sound, I don't want to sound racially motivated and I don't want to get political, but I'm going to tell you the truth. You are never going to convince a government you are never going to convince, convince a worldly government that black lives matter when they have no regard for life, period. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. When you're passing laws that say you can abort without regulation and take the life of an innocent unborn child at will right. with no repercussion, right. trust me, that's a government that has no regard for life, period. Amen. So try to convince them that black lives matter. Right. Ain't going to work. That's why God says what he says. He says, you know, you got, you got governments and you got political people. You got leaders down there in the world. He said that are calling good evil. And they're calling evil good. They're calling darkness light. You know, they're, they're saying all of these things and it's wrong. And God says, you just be patient because one of these days, he says, I'm going to straighten out the whole mess. And when he does, we better be ready. We better be ready. Because what's going to happen is what God has told us in his word is going to begin to take place. What's that, Pastor? The greatest revival this world has ever seen is going to begin to happen. Why? Because the world and the governments of this world are going to fall apart. And they are going to, they're, they're going to go bankrupt. They're, they're, they're just going to completely fall apart because there's no truth in them. There, there's no truth there in what they do. They just get confused, and they just and and more and more people are gonna are gonna get sucked into that. Right. But there are gonna be some people that are standing back thinking, "Good heavens, yep. what happened yep. to this world?" Yep. But then all of a sudden, 
<laughs> this is the part I get excited about. All of a sudden, they're going to be standing there in their despair. Sister Cheryl, they're going to be standing there going, Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? And all of a sudden, they're going to stop. They're going to look up on the hill. Amen. And they're going to see a light. Amen. Um, they're going to see a light. Right. And they say, Woo, hey, things look like they're different over there. Right. And, and some of them are going to begin to show up at our church doors. Amen. And some of them are going to say, we, we, you know, the world's falling apart, but we noticed here, for, for whatever reason, you know, we saw a light on here at this house, and it seems like things are different here. We come to find out what's going on. Amen. i got to repeat that. Some of you didn't hear me, because I thought that would have, you know, <laughs> give some spontaneous applaud there. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They're, they're going to say, we, 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 we just want to know what's going on here, because obviously there's something different in this house than what's going on out there in the world, because you people are living different, and I want to find out what it's all about. Right. I can tell you what it's all about. It's God. Yes. Can I, go, can I go back a few weeks? It's God. Yeah. All caps. G-O-D. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And, and here's the thing. and We've got to be prepared for that. That's my message to you today. We've got to be prepared for that. We've got to prepare ourselves and understand when they start coming in by the droves. And they will. I promise you they're going to come. We better be ready. That's right. That's right. Because some of them, not gonna work so pretty. They might even smell a little. They might. Yeah. Amen. Okay. We better be ready. That's right. And we better be ready, just like I preached the last two weeks. We better be ready to allow God to pour out blessings right. on them. Right. And not be jealous. Right. Of what God does for them. Right. We gotta be ready. Right. Because the bottom line here is the buck stops. Here. Has the government stolen away some of what the church is supposed to be doing and, and some of what God put the church here for? Yep, the enemy has stolen away. But just like everything else, he's, he's going to screw it up. He's going to mess it up. And sooner or later, God's going God's to empower his people to go into the enemy's camp and take back everything that belongs to him. And can I tell you, and I'm going to close with this, I'm going to tell you right now, the church is going to start doing what God put it here to do. We're going to be offering people a hand up. We're going to be meeting their needs. We're going to be pouring out because of the abundance of our resource. Okay? And, and, and I'm telling you, it happens. It, it happens. I'm not bragging. You know, but there are a whole lot of places out there right now who are struggling. Yeah. Even churches yeah. who are struggling. Can you understand? God, God told us at the beginning of the year, and, 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 and He spoke to us. Because last year we saw a lot of great things happen in this church. We got into our 21-day fasting and prayer vigil, you know, this year. You know, and God spoke to this church, and He said, I'm going to tell you what. You think 2019 was good? He said, wait till 2020. He said, even greater things. Even greater things Amen. you're going to see. And then all of a sudden, things just went. Yeah. But I got news for you. In the midst of all of that, when there are churches out there that are struggling to keep their doors open. Yeah. When, when, there, when there are places out there that, that they just have no idea what they're going to do. Can I tell you something? And, and I'm only speaking from, from, from one area. But in ministry, you know, we've accomplished a lot of things. But can I tell you something else? Can I tell you something else? And I want this to come across correctly. This church, and I'm talking about Family Life Ministries right here in Butler, Pennsylvania. This little church has seen one of the most prosperous financial years we have ever seen in the history of this local church. You know why? Because God's people are being faithful. And when God says, when you are faithful, I will bless you, God means what he says. Right. And I promise you, if we continue to serve God in that fashion, if we continue to be faithful in what God is doing, when the people begin to look to the people of God like they're supposed to, when the government fails, when all of that goes haywire, and people start looking back to the church, looking back to God, you know, and coming back to God, God will put in our hands and put in our pockets what we need to provide right. what we need to do to That's accomplish right. what God gave us to do. Right. The buck stops 
here. Right. And we need to be prepared. And I believe that's what God's calling us to. That's what God wants us to be. He wants us to be the church. He wants us to be Christ to the world today. God bless you.